welcome to Engage with Sage. Today, I am super excited. We have something completely different. And Miss Rust is here to show you guys some really cool sewing tips and tricks. And don't worry, all of our teachers are backstage and in the comment bar. They will also be presenting with the hot seat. Yes, so make sure you guys are thinking about hot seat questions because today is a good day because it's Engage with Sage. All right, all right. So this morning I posted a comment over here and asked for you guys to say what your first name is and what your favorite fruit is. So make sure you guys, if you're joining us, make sure you go ahead and post. So we know you're there and we know you are watching. Hello everyone, welcome to another Engage with Sage. Ms. Co is in the backstage also waiting for the hot seat because you know our teachers love, love, love that. So we have avocado 13, Triton, and favorite food is fried ravioli. I don't know if you guys know this, but clearly I'm very hungry. Lasagna is my favorite, and as we learned from our family episode, uh, Miss Co makes the best lasagna. So we're super excited. So again, thank you guys for being here. We love that you're here. This is one of the favorite things we do all week. Oh, cake, that sounds delicious. Oh, nachos. Okay, everybody. Dr. Marston is also here and loves Mexican food. So enough of me talking because I know that you are here to welcome Miss Rust. Hi, Miss Rust. How are you? Hi. You well. Welcome, cool. everybody. So what are you going to be showing us today? Okay. Well, first I'm going to show you the trophy that I have because my oh. students are awesome with their code word or code word. So anybody who's in my class, email me the code word later when Miss Co shows that. I like having this trophy. So way to go. Um, and today I'm going to just talk to you all a little bit about some things that you might need to fix around your house when it comes to clothes mishaps. So, uh, but first I want to ask you a few trivia questions. So get ready to answer these in the chat bar, everybody. So um, first tell me this, this is just a kind of an opinion question. Why do you get rid of clothes other than outgrowing them? Because I know you're still growing. What would be a reason you would get rid of clothes? Okay. Um, and while you're thinking of that and responding in the chat bar, I'm going to um, just throw out a fun fact at you. I don't know if you realize that Americans alone, just Americans, throw away 70 pounds of usable textiles every year. Every American on average throws away that much. And when you put it all together, that is about 25 billion pounds of textiles in the world that are just thrown away. Um, and so... Uh, that is kind of surprising. Um, and 95% of those can be fixed or repurposed or recycled. So that is important to know. Um, another thing that is important to know um, on that is that clothes actually, when they're in a landfill, they release um, toxic gas when they're decomposing. And so you might think, I'm just gonna throw this shirt away because you know it has holes in it or whatnot, but it actually goes to the landfill and um, harms our atmosphere uh, because of the toxic gas it uh, releases. So that is kind of interesting. Um, and all of this really aligns to, to a global goal that some of us have been looking at with the UN um, global goals. But um, so in order to preserve some of your things instead of throwing them away, I thought what I would do would be demonstrate a common thing that um, a lot of people wish they knew how to do and it's really easy and it's just replacing a button um, a missing button on a shirt um, and so I have with me today you're just you just need thread and a needle and you need a button and it could even be a mismatched button it wouldn't even have to be the same button that matches your shirt okay so just really quickly to demonstrate you need only about 12 to 15 inches of thread and a needle and my needle is awesome because it is a self-threading needle so you can see the eye there um, i can just get it threaded really quickly okay all right 
So that's what that looks like. And in order for your button to be secure, you do have to have a knot in the end of your thread. Um, so give me just a second. I'm just doing a simple little knot there, okay? All right, and then wherever you are missing a button, I think the easiest way to get started is to go in from the back and then you can see that I have my needle there where you want the button to be and then you can slip your button right over your needle and you're gonna pull up and just pull lightly because you want the knot to catch on the back side of your fabric. And on my button, you can see that there are four holes. Uh, you're just gonna go opposite to the opposite hole and go down through the fabric of the shirt, uh, except my needle came unthreaded. Hang tight, technical difficulties. Of course, this would happen on live TV, right? Okay. Hang on, everybody. All right, so I'm back to where before the mishap. All right, you just basically are gonna go back and forth and back and forth through those holes and up and down through the fabric until it is secure, which is, I would usually do it about three times. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but I chose thread that doesn't even match the thread on my other buttons. And you know what? No one's gonna notice. No one's gonna notice whenever I get this all done. Um, one thing that some people forget or don't know when they replace a button is that there's an important step to keep them from coming off. It's called the shank. Uh, and basically you go in, I'm gonna go in through the back where my knot is and go between the button and the fabric. See where my needle's coming up? And this is the last step in uh, replacing a button. Technical difficulties again. Hang on guys. Well, I don't know why my thread is catching, of course, uh, but let's pretend I have my whole length of thread. You're going to lasso the button three times. That's called the shank. What that does is it gives a little space for the button hole to live whenever it's buttoned again. And so it doesn't give tension, put tension on the button. Then you just go back into the back between the button and the back of the fabric and you tie a knot and your button is repaired um, and replaced. So then you don't have to throw that nice shirt away. Um, so that is that. What do you think, Ms. Vogel? That was awesome. That was really cool. And everybody over here is, they have some good comments. Ms. Co was uh, talking about, she recently learned about polyester. Um, and I will say, I did not know that. So that is really cool. And they did, we had a lot of people answer your question about why they donate clothes. Um, but Mr. Adamson does because he has to stay in style. Um, yeah. You know, that's important. That is important because uh, that's why we get rid of clothes. But also, Trenton yeah. talked about holes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any tips about holes? Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of fun ways that you can make holes actually stylish. You can, um, and I, I didn't even think about showing that as an idea. You can. There are ways to just mend the hole so it looks like it's not even there. But then there are fun things that you can do to patch it, like with fun fabrics and stitches and stuff like that. But uh, maybe I'll save that for another engage with Sage. Awesome. Um, we have a question for you over here. Yeah. What gave you an idea to start a sewing class? Well, um, I feel like it's something that a lot of people can use in their daily life uh, without, you know, to help to help themselves. Um, but also, I think for mental health, um, I think it is a skill that gives a lot of people um, just a stress relief. It's kind of a hobby for a lot of people. And so um, anything that I can do that could provide a skill or a mental release for students, um, then everybody wins. So that's that's probably where that idea came from. Well, here is the following comment. It's amazing and inspirational. So if that doesn't give you a reason, there you go, there's one right there. Um, Simon did say you can use paper clips and holes. Okay. So that'll be interesting to see what that one is. But we have yeah. a lot of people that have learned some cool stuff. Ms. Schaefer, yeah. I didn't know about the wraparound button part. That was yeah. a good tip. Hey, I have another fun fact. Ooh, that this is, is going to be crazy. So in the comment bar, I want you guys to say, how many gallons of water do you think it takes to make one pair of jeans? Mm -hmm. Okay, so give me your best guess. How many gallons of water to make one pair of jeans? Okay, and while you're thinking about that, um, I just wanted to show you a couple other ways that you can uh, repurpose things that are around the house that might be broken and you might be thinking about throwing them away. Mm -hmm. So one of them is a sock. This used to be a sock. 
And my mom actually made this out of an old sock. And you just, this is called a, a kiss clasp um, that you just glue the end of your sock there. And now you have a coin purse or something else. Um, this is the, uh, I don't know what you would call that, the end of a sleeve of a button up shirt that is now uh, sewn up this side and sewn up this side and now it can hold my earbuds or something else, change or something. Uh, this drawstring bag could carry lots of cool things and it's made out of old jeans that couldn't be worn anymore. Uh, this coaster is cut out of an old quilt um, that had holes in it and couldn't be repaired. So I've got a nice little coaster. And I don't know about you guys, but in elementary school, I know you probably did fun runs and you got a lot of t-shirts with your elementary school on it and maybe your friends signed the back, but you grew out of it or you just didn't like to wear it anymore. You could uh, just make a little bag out of it by sewing the bottom shut and cutting the arms off. Um, so there are a lot of ways that you can use the things around your house that are textiles instead of just throwing them away. Very cool. Um, we have a lot of answers over here to your question. Can okay. you okay, repeat the question one more time? All right. The question was how much water, how many gallons of water are used to make one pair of jeans? And I can see in the comments that um, there are some good guesses and I do see one correct answer. Really? I do see a correct answer. So Caleb Johnson has the correct answer of 1,800 gallons of water it takes to grow the cotton and to uh, make the dye that is used and whatnot. So from beginning to end, 1,800 gallons of water for one pair of jeans. So That's crazy. And we were talking a little bit, you brought up a little bit about the global goals. Mm -hmm. And you, with just sewing and repurposing, what goal would that be? Yeah. Students, do you know which goal that would be? Any guesses real quick? Well, as we're guessing and we're waiting for them to guess, we also talked about water. Yeah. And how much it takes to make a pair of jeans. And if we're constantly throwing them out, um, yeah. that's a lot more water. And there, there's also a goal out there about water, too. So right. that's me that we can that yeah. one project is a lot of different goals. You're right. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of comments yet, but actually it aligns with goal number 12, which is responsible production and consumption. So um, just by taking care of the things that you have at your house, instead of throwing them away, you are contributing to that goal that the UN has established. So can you talk a little bit about, you just said UN, for those that don't know much about the global goals, can you just yeah. give them a really quick overview of what they are? Yeah. So, you know, the UN stands for the United Nations. And some of you have been talking about that in your guilds. Um, and it's an important group of people from all over the world, almost all the countries in the world, not all of them, but almost. And they have these 17 goals to make the earth healthier and to make people healthier. Um, and they all relate to things that everyone everywhere can do, really. Um, a lot of them, the things that we can do in our daily life, like um, access to clean water is an important goal they have for everyone on the earth. And there are a lot of things that we can do for that. Um, it looks like that's goal number six. Um, let's see, life underwater is another goal. And so that's one that would be important to me. I hate thinking about the trash in the ocean. And so one thing that I do is I try to limit how much um, single use plastics I use in my life. And so um, it's good to take a look at those goals and see which ones are important to you and ones that you can, you know, take some action on just in your daily life. Yeah. And a lot of guilds right now, if you think yeah. about what guilds that you're working on and, and thinking about which goal that you may be or goals that your yeah. guild kind of fits into as well. So very right. And, and all of you have met A.Y. Young, who is one of the young ambassadors to the mm -hmm. UN Global Goals. Fun fact, he's the only one from the United States, and he yeah. is also a partner in our education. So we're yeah. really happy to have him here um, to help us kind of guide, too, because he's working on these goals every day with the battery tour and another, all the other projects he has going on. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Well, that was wonderful, Miss Russ. And I want to thank you so much because I come to you sometimes when my buttons are broken and things yeah. like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I'll encourage anybody, if you're here at Sage and you have an issue with any kind of your textiles, bring it over and we will problem solve. We will fix it here at Sage. So. Okay. Well, Miss Russ, do you know what time it is? I think I might. Yeah. Do you want to go to the hot seat? Yeah, it is.
it. This is my favorite time. And I get to bring on the rest of our family here in the bar. Hi, everyone. Uh, how good was my last segment? Wasn't it awesome? Great. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Kelly, you're the first one to speak, um, and I think you have something really important to, to tell everybody out there. Well, you know, I do. The code word has to deal with something related to our show, and so something that I didn't see Miss Rust use, but when I'm sewing, I like to use it because I tend to prick my fingers a lot, and it is thimble. Ooh, look at that fancy one. <clears throat> I know, I worked hard on this one. It's too bad we can't have an art engage with Sage with Mrs. Co. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I would need a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, we have been, we are, I'm really excited because we had a, a, quite a few students that signed up to do a co-host event. Um, and so maybe we can convince one of them to do a, um, a show for us in, here in the future. So that'll be a lot of fun. All right, you guys, how are, how are you all doing? Is everybody doing okay? Doing good. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a really exciting time around here. We've had a lot of birthdays. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot. Miss Turner, who has had a birthday on our team? This year? Yeah, well, Doug, this was in the last couple of weeks. Okay. Oh, now you put me on the stop. Well, I know Miss Duffitz was yesterday. Sorry if I'm giving that away. <laughs> um, and I know Miss Co is coming up because we have a birthday nope. for her. Nope. It was it last, last week. week. Last week. Yeah. Okay. I, know I put her on the spot. Sorry, Miss Turner. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. And then Miss Rust is coming up. Yep. Yes. And Miss um, Schaefer had one a couple weeks oh, ago. Yeah, Miss Schaefer had one. And then Does you know her. now uh, Miss Duffett is so old she has to use filters? <laughs> I do. <laughs> she needed a filter for me, she said, all, all these, the teacher wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, get your bangs. Right now, Hide them. No, I hate bangs. Well, at least you're not in your bathroom. I'm not in my bathroom. I'm at school today. Yay. That was awesome. That was so, that's still one of my funniest memories. Um, and so be thinking about your guys' funniest memories of our show, because here um, later on, I'm going to send your teachers another survey for you guys to fill out for a future show. So be thinking about what one of your funniest memories are of our show. And you can always go back and watch them. They're all recorded. All right. So back to the hot seat. We have a question over here from Miss Duffett. Here it is. Miss Duffett, have you seen anything squirrely lately? We have two squirrels in our backyard named Bob. Oh, they're both named Bob? Bob one and Bob two? I love that. <laughs> you ever seen that movie, What About Bob? That's what I think of now. Uh, yeah, the squirrels are out in full force, kids. It is uh, coming, becoming spring. Um, I have not had any close squirrel encounters lately. I have been walking my dog quite a bit, but she chases the squirrels off for me, so I appreciate that from my little Bentley girl. Very cool, very cool. All right, here we go. Let's put Mr. Adamson on the hot seat. What job would you do if you didn't work at Sage? Um, I think I would work with something with numbers. I like math a lot or um or sports. I would I would be in one of those areas if I didn't. I also like travel though. There's three answers. How about that? Pretty good. That is pretty good. All right, so now what I'm going to allow you to do is something completely different. While we're waiting for some more questions over here in the comment bar, I'm going to have one of you ask anyone on the team a hot seat question. That's going to be tough. So all of you guys have been listening to all of our answers all year, but now you guys get to answer. You get to ask a hot seat question to anyone on the screen. All right, so Ms. Torres, you have the floor. Which teacher are you going to ask a hot seat Hot seat question too. Woo, I don't do well on the spot, Miss Strobel, but I'm gonna do my best here. There's some over in the comment section if you want to steal some. Okay, well, I would love to know what let's say Mrs. Russ's bucket list dream trip would be. Bucket list dream what? Trip. Trip. You could go any vacation or trip in the world. Where would you go? What would oh, you go? yeah. 
I want to do what another teacher is going to do. And it's a Mediterranean cruise. So I want to hit a several of the European countries that, um, yeah, on the Mediterranean dream. Awesome. That's a good one. That was not, that wasn't too hard. Was it? So now, no. now we know how our students feel when I put them on the spot. All right. We have a question for everybody. We'll go around really quick. One at a time. Cats or dogs? Miss Co, you start. I like both, but if I had to choose, I'd choose dogs. All right. What about you, Miss Duffett? All dogs, all the time. All right, Miss Turner. Dogs. I'll tolerate cats, but dogs. All right, Miss Torres. Dogs. I'm allergic to cats. Uh, Miss Rust. I can't. I can't choose. I've always been a dog person till quarantine, and then my cat changed my life. So I'm a dog and a cat. Can't choose. Okay. What no. about you, Mr. Adamson? Uh, neither. I like to travel. <laughs> How about your fish tank? We like the guppies are doing well. Yeah, those are pretty easy. All right, here we got another one. What about you, Miss Vogel? Oh, oh, dog person all the way, hands down. Easy question for me. Okay, if you could live on one fictional character's life, who would it be? I'm gonna let everybody think about that one for a second. Let's put Miss Stuffit on the hot seat. Oh my God, that's I was just thinking. I'm like, I have no idea. I know that was hard because you don't really, you're not, you don't dig fantasy and stuff very much. So no, I'm, I don't. Um, I, I, as I said this morning, I really feel like a reality TV crew should follow me around because I literally can't make up the stuff that happens in my own real life. Oh yeah, what I'm happened today? Did anything weird happen to you today? A little bit weird. Um, I left my house this morning through my garage, and then before <laughs> I quite made it out of my uh, neighborhood. My daughter called me hysterical because there was, um, I think one of the neighborhood cats, why, well, thank you neighborhood cat, but no thanks, um, left a little animal carcass on my front porch this morning or last night, who knows? And my daughter and the dog found it this morning and I was like, well, can you move it? No, I can't touch it. <laughs> this is my almost 17 year old. So I had to go home and remove the little sad bunny that was on my porch oh. this morning. Are you sure it was a bunny? Maybe it was a squirrel. I did look for a fuzzy tail. I did not see that. But oh. maybe it was missing. Who knows? All right. We'll let you slide I'm on that sure one. what happened, but that's how my morning started. Oh, man. All right. Well, hopefully it's just getting better from now. Getting better oh, and better. Yeah, of course. All right. Miss Turner, Star Wars or Harry Potter? Oh, Star Wars all the way. Okay. Uh, Miss Owsley, juice or water? Um, only soda, as Ms. Turner was always telling me, was not great for me last year. Um, I would, would drink juice or water. But yeah, probably water. Okay. <laughs> um, let's go, Miss Russ, movies or TV shows? I'm going to go TV shows. My attention span is short. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you picked one because really you don't watch a lot of TV, do you? I don't. Yeah. I yeah. actually, I knew that about you. All right, Miss Co, this is going to be a really, really hard question. So I'm going to get put you on the hot seat for this one. Who is your most inspirational student this year? Ooh. <laughs> That's a hard one. That is a very difficult one. I mean. Well, let's think maybe not just this year, but maybe just like always and forever. Do you have a student that stuck out to you? Yes. Um, but this student, unfortunately, she passed away. She had leukemia and she ended up, I had her when she was in fourth grade and she ended up being valedictorian of her class when she graduated. And then shortly after graduation, she passed away. So she was wow. my inspiration. Very cool. Does anybody else have a inspirational student? that you've had in the past that you can think of like right now on the hot seat? Miss Torres, you're shaking your head. Okay, what do you got? Um, so I had a student that um, I had at Davidson actually. I was just talking about him the other day and he was the most kind student and the, just one of the most leaders that stuck out. And he came from he came from a hard life and he rose above it and he really took care of his younger siblings and was so responsible. And he happens to be um, at a really big university on a full scholarship for academics and football right now. So um, just seeing him kind of come out of that and 
do such great things with his life is really awesome to see. So that's been sticking out with me lately. Very cool. Thanks for sharing those, you guys. Mr. Adamson, you got an easy one, Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. Okay, easy breezy. There wasn't even a tell me why. Okay, I know what Miss Owsley and Mr. Adamson are gonna say on this one. So I'm not gonna go to those two, but let's go to Miss Rust. Disney World or Universal Studios? I've only been to Disney World. I'm not much of a theme park person, but um, so maybe I should choose Universal since I've never been there. There you go, there you go. Um, Miss Duffett, what about you? Um, I've been to both. Um, I'm like Miss Russ, not a big theme park person. So you can just leave me at the beach and y'all can go on to your Disney trips and I will uh, just catch you on the beach. There you go. Okay, Miss Owsley. Not okay. relaxing. Yeah, that's true. Not for some people, for her. But Miss yeah, Owsley, which one do you think Mr. Adams is like? Yeah. Miss, what was the second part of that? The What were you and Mr. Adamson go? Well, I've never been to Universal either, but plenty of time at Disney World. But the beach too, like we have, I have multiple days in our trips and stuff that plan to lay by the pool at the Disney Resort I stay at with like a Dumbo slide. So it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> but actually we would love to do Universal eventually with and, uh, Harry Potter land. I really want to see that. So one of these days. Oh, you've never been to Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah, That's so we want to do that eventually. Yeah. Mr. Addison, have you done Universal? Because I know you've done Disney. Yeah, I've done both, and um, I would always pick Disney because it's more like a whole experience where Universal has a lot of good rides. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, well, Miss Rush, you have a shout out over here, so we're going to put you on the hot seat. Who is your most creative student? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, I mean, obviously, we're here at Sage. I have so many creative yeah. students, like way too many to name. I have one certain student this year who every assignment I give – student um she finds a way to put her own little spin on it and does it really well um i don't i just i hate to call out one i know I, that's tough i know i you know they always do this to us and they always have us do it it's like you can't say who your favorite kid is like they know that right i know exactly that's okay you don't have to say it name. I, I won't make you should i say her name or no what do you think teachers Co-workers, no. Okay. <laughs> she's a seventh grader. I'll give you that. And she's oh, a girl. There you go. There you go. Now we got, we're down to go. Okay, Miss Duffet, you got one over here for you. Well, here you go again. Uh, I mean, they, they like to know. I know. Isabel, you know how I'm going to answer this because you know it's a very sarcastic Duffet answer. And I, when you guys ask me, who is your favorite student? I always say, eh, I don't like any of you. That way you're all even. Yeah. And you know I'm kidding because I love you all. You know I love my Duffeteers. So I always just give you that sarcastic answer because you know we can't answer that. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, but here's a good oh, reminder. No, it's a, it has to be a Duffet answer. It has to be very sarcastic. Yes, Isabella, thank you for this uh, reminder. Definitely, definitely true. And we are we put ourselves out there live for all of you guys. So it's out there forever. Oh, here's a good one. What are you guys doing over spring break? Is anybody doing anything over spring break? Ms. Turner, what about you? Do you get to see any of your kids over spring break? So my kids' spring break in college is the week before ours. So my husband is going to take them all to the Grand Canyon and go hiking. And, take, and I won't get to see my son, but my daughter, hers actually goes a few days into ours. So she's going to come home. Um, they're going to pick her up. Or, bring her home and we're going to get to see her for a couple of days. And then my mom and I are going to drive her back. So we'll go to Colorado. Oh, very fun. All right, Miss Russ, somebody thinks they know the answer. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Huh? And then Isabella, she already knew that was coming and stuff, but that was no surprise. So there you go. You guys, unfortunately, it is the end of our show. But before we go, I want to tell you about a couple of our upcoming shows, which are really exciting. Ms. Duffa, do you want to talk about next week's show? I do. So next week, we're going to do the family show, part two. So we can make sure we get all of our Sage families involved. So Ms. Fogel's family and Mr. Adamson's family and Mrs. Rust's family will get to be on the game show. And guess who gets to host? 
Can't wait. I've always wanted my own show. You guys know that. Uh, although Duffa kids are very sad they can't do it again. They love that. They keep asking, Mom, when can we do that again? So big hit, the Duffet House. Um, so hope you can join us for that one. And then Perfect. March 17th, you can do that one, Miss Fogel? Yeah, so that one's really exciting. We're going to have your elementary teachers on here. Your fourth and fifth grade teachers are going to be on um, saying hi to you guys. And they're really, really excited because uh, with COVID that we aren't able to move around the building as much. So we know that you haven't been able to see those teachers. So they will all be on, which I'm super excited. Um, so if you want to come back and visit all of your elementary teachers and say hi to them into the chat bar, um, they will be excited. But don't worry. They're only going to be on half the show and then we are all coming back. So we will all be on there again um, as well. So you'll have two um, worlds on one show. So that's going to be super exciting. All right. They are so happy you're going to be hosting Miss Duffet. Hey, I'm so excited. <laughs> awesome. Okay, everyone. This is the end of our show. We'll go through really quick and everyone can say their quick goodbyes until next week when Miss Duffet will be on the host family show part two. Okay, I'm gonna say goodbye now and we'll have Miss Duffet in since she'll start the next show. So Miss Rust. Guys, thank you for joining us on Wednesdays. It is so nice to see your comments in the chat bar and even just, you know, um, knowing that you're there and the emails that thanks for sending us the code word. And it's been great on Wednesdays to spend time with you. Have a great week. Miss Co. I hope everybody gets to go outside and enjoy the nice weather, um, get some fresh air and get some exercise out there. And I guess I will see you all later. Awesome. And Mr. Addison. Uh, have a good week and we'll see you next time. Ms. Torres. Thanks for tuning in today. It was so great to see your comments. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week. Can't wait to see you again. Perfect. And we're going to skip Miss Duffet, Miss Turner. Uh, so, fun fact I learned this week was that this year, 2021, is the bicentennial of the statehood of Missouri. So, be looking for celebrations and things in our state and go enjoy that. Um, I'll start posting some stuff out there on our Facebook page. So, and also go outside and enjoy the weather. Perfect. Miss Owsley. There I am. Hi, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks for coming. All right, Miss Duffet, the floor is yours to close the show. All right, I hope everybody can tune in and tell your friends next week. The uh, family show said big hit, so I think all the other families will be in, enjoy being on there, and I get to host my own show again. So excited. So have a great week. I said enjoy the weather. These are Miss Duffet, perfect conditions, sunny and 70. See ya. Yay. Bye, everyone.